Hey everyone, my name is Paul Bamson and welcome to another You're Doing It Wrong short. Today we're going to be talking about file size. Now, we can all relate to applying to a firm and they request a 10 megabyte portfolio. And you're like, whoa, how am I supposed to get my portfolio that's 30, 40, 50 megabytes all under 10 megabytes while retaining the quality and in showing all of the content that I want to show. So today's session, I'm going to be talking about a few techniques that will actually help reduce the file size, but retain the quality and allow you to show all of the information that you want to show. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to be using both Illustrator and InDesign to demonstrate this. Now, some of the traditional ways that you export the PDF from Illustrator are either print to PDF or save as copy, right? And I'm going to show you some examples of the file size that I've already exported here. This is save as copy. It's 13 megabytes big. Now imagine if you have multiple boards that are all 13 megabytes big, you're going to have a massive file. The print to PDF file was only about 6.8 megabytes, but also really large. So how do we get those file sizes down? The technique I'm going to show you is pretty interesting, and it's one that I stumbled upon when I was trying to meet a deadline and my file wasn't printing. So you go over to File, Export, Export As, and instead of PDF, you want to choose TIFF. Now the reason why I choose TIFF is because TIFF files are high quality raster files that allow you to convert to PDF and also retain all of that quality. So let's go ahead and show you. So I'm going to choose TIFF. And you want to make sure that you check use artboards. Super important because if you don't, it will export everything in your Illustrator document, including things that are outside of the artboard. So always, always, always make sure that you check use artboards. And of course, you can control the range that you want. But in this case, there's only one file in here, so all is fine. I'm going to go ahead and hit export. Now, it's important to pay attention to these settings that pop up here. You have RGB. CMYK and grayscale. Now again, RGB stands for light information. CMYK stands for pigment. So when things are meant to be viewed on screen and viewed digitally, you want to use RGB format. When things are meant to be printed, you want to use CMYK. And it's important to already have been working in these file formats with the end goal in mind. And sometimes your work gets viewed as both. And Computer software is pretty good at distinguishing between both. And in order to mitigate the differences between the two, you also want to make sure that you check Embed ICC Profile. This will help keep the colors as consistent as possible when you have to switch between the modes. You also want to look at resolution here. You want to make sure that you're using high 300 PPI. Anything over 300 PPI is overkill unless you're dealing with scanned information or you're a photographer who's looking at high resolution photos. Anything over 300 PPI is overkill. Screen resolution output is 72 DPI. So if you're above that, your content's going to look pretty good. So we'll go ahead and hit OK. We'll wait for the TIFF to write. And this process right now is actually flattening the file. One of the reasons why your PDFs are so large is because the PDFs contain all of the vector information, all of the raster information, all of the transparencies, all of the text. And all of that information is embedded in that PDF, and things have to read that. For example, when you send it to a printer, and it takes five minutes before your print starts, the reason that it's doing that is because all of that information has to be read by the printer first. While actually flattening your file or turning it into a high-quality raster limits what the printer has to do in order to get the file ready to print. So let's go ahead and check that out. So I've got my TIFF here, and it's actually quite large. It's 271 megabytes. And so you might look at that and think, whoa, that's way bigger than anything I can send or anything I was anticipating. But we're not done yet. We're actually going to use Adobe Acrobat's Convert to PDF feature to take this high quality TIFF file and turn it into a PDF. Now again, you do need the pro version of Adobe Acrobat DC. So make sure you have that installed first. Right click on the file, go over to Convert to Adobe PDF. This process will take this massive TIFF file, this super high resolution, and actually reduce the file size quite a bit, which surprised me the first time I learned about this. So let's go ahead and save the PDF. And we're going to compare the two file sizes that come out of this. So we've got the new PDF, which is 3.5 megabytes. Perfect. 
compared to the 13 and the 6.8 megabyte files that we had before by just saving as a copy or printing the PDF. So let's go ahead and repeat the process for InDesign. And I've got my portfolio here and it's got a lot of pages in it, but I'm just going to go ahead and work with the first 21 for the purposes of this tutorial. So when you have when you're done with your portfolio and you want to go ahead and export it and get it under a file size that's necessary for you to send the file, click on file, export, and instead of choosing PDF, instead choose PNG. Now what this does is it exports each page or spread as an individual PNG file. So it's important that you create a new folder to put to place these in because if you just throw it on your desktop, you're going to have a thousand floating files and that's not what you want. So I went ahead and created a new folder just for this export. I'm going to go ahead and click save and select the range of pages here. In your case, you'd probably just want all checked. So pay attention to that. It's also important to pay attention to pages versus spreads. Now, if you, this is something you're uploading to issue, you want to use pages. That's super important because if you upload spreads, to issue it will treat the spreads as a page and then you'll have four pages on one spread and that's not what you want so pay attention to which one is checked here in this case if you're sending it to an employer directly use spreads that way your entire spread is in view at once I'm going to use maximum quality okay so pay attention to that resolution again 300 ppi anything above is overkill and anything too low is not high enough resolution in this case, we're just going to use RGB. I'm going to go ahead and hit export. We're going to wait for it to process. Again, this is a flattening process, so it's taking all that complex vector information, all that complex raster, and turning it all into a high resolution raster, which is smaller and easier to process, and of course, easier to print as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the result here. We've got all of our spreads here, and I'm going to go ahead and combine them into a PDF file. So go ahead and select them all, right click, combine files in Adobe Acrobat. Now, one more thing that's really important to note when you get to this process is you want to go ahead and click on the cog and uncheck save as PDF portfolio. Super important that this is unchecked. So check this every time you're doing this process to make sure that this isn't checked. Click OK. And then go ahead and hit Combined. OK. And once the process is done, you can do one more quality check here. But once you're satisfied with the results, go ahead and hit Save. And save this as a PDF. And now it's ready to go ahead and send to your potential employer. Okay, let's go ahead and check the eventual file size. And we look at that, 3.6 megs, and that's over 20 or 11 spreads. So this is the process that I've been using for quite some time, and I think will really help you get your high-quality portfolios to your potential employers, but at a resolution that's good for you. So hope you enjoyed this session. Be sure to check out the other videos on the channel. There will be more coming, so look out for more of the sessions and shorts on a variety of topics that will help you save time and energy while you're in school and in the profession. So thanks guys, and we'll see you in the next video. And now you're doing it right. Be sure to check out the other you're doing it wrong sessions. Thanks for watching.